number of years ago, a group of them approached me with the idea of starting up their own orchestra. And of course, naturally, I was very intrigued by the idea. Well, obviously, the, the first question I asked about, about this uh, orchestra is that why do we need another orchestra here in Singapore? I realised that they were, in fact, wanting to embark on music making for the purest of reasons. I think many of them are happy to perform at a high level without fees in order to raise funds uh, for, for charitable organisations and that is a totally commendable thing. We have seen many young talents who excel in music making in their school days and uh, not many of them continue to pursue their passion, their love for music. It's an excellent platform for us to showcase these talents. Basically, we have to look back in to the school CCA system. Plus, um, there are string ensembles and then there are bands, but nobody actually puts them together to form symphony orchestras. So actually, there's a whole lot of us who graduate from school not having played the great works by Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, Ninth Symphony, Rachmaninoff's Second Symphony, Rinzi Koskov's Sherazad. We actually like, wanted to play all these pieces, but never actually got the chance to in school. So we were thinking, wait, hey, why not set up an orchestra? So a small bunch of us actually got together in about 2006. We wrote in Professor Chan Zilo to actually help us in the discussion. There were talks that you know, we wanted to do something different, like how our orchestra would actually be different from normal orchestras in the way it's run. So we actually had a charitable purpose attached to this orchestra when it was formed. And if we were to do it in a charitable form, we need to have a large sum of money to be able to carry it out. So we actually discussed for a very long time, until actually Prof Chan got a call from HSBC early 2008. Yeah, they actually proposed to him that we put together a concert for the past HSBC Youth Excellence Award winners. We basically jumped on the opportunity. We took the opportunity and, and formed them an orchestra in 48 hours. When we first started off, um, we had a really, really great um, difficult time because of the financial constraints that we actually faced and this was the greatest obstacle for our organization because we couldn't uh, really loan instruments and and we, everything was run on a very tight budget we attempted a few different types of approach to get sponsorship for the percussion instruments and the double bass instruments, these are really huge instruments and it's very difficult for them to actually own one themselves. So we actually have to go out to uh, not only loan them, but uh, transporting them to rehearsal venues is also a problem. We actually have an external you know, commitment and that is to juggle our work or our studies. And especially during examination period, the, the, there might be a test of our commitment towards music. Rehearsal venue is a really, really integral problem because right now we have not have a fixed place to rehearse. And then one other problem with the rehearsal venue is that there's a huge structural pillar in the middle of the room. So we actually need to divide the orchestra into half, which is actually not very conducive. For our first concert in January 2009, we actually had on the program Rinsky, Korsakov, Scheherazade. Usually it's a showpiece for professional orchestras. We were a little nervous because the repertoire chosen was actually very challenging. For example, the concerto was not an ordinary concerto. We did the Vojak cello concerto, which is actually like a symphony with a cello solo. So there was a lot of orchestra interaction with the soloists and not just mere accompaniment. And then on top of that, we also did the Shaharaza. It's a symphonic poem, which is described as an orchestra showpiece. It's for these virtuoso orchestras. Expectations were on us to actually perform well. This was the chance to actually prove ourselves. To me, I was kind of excited, yet yeah, at the same time apprehensive. I'm not sure whether, you know, how people would perceive our orchestra, whether the other arts communities in Singapore would actually recognise and agree with what we were doing and think that we actually could play. We actually felt really, really great about the concert because it really turned out better than our expectations.
It helped to boost our confidence and our belief that the orchestra was on the right track. And just two months later, we did another concert in March. We did a Brahms, Brahms First Symphony, which is very different from Scheherazade because Scheherazade tells a story, it's very accessible. It's, whereas uh, Brahms First Symphony was more abstract, it was more solid music without telling a story. So in a sense, we had a different set of challenges. With most orchestras, it's the music director that make programming decisions. The orchestra of the music makers is different. They have an artistic committee and the committee polls its members to see which other pieces that they would really like to perform and then make some judgments with regards to cost, viability, level of difficulty before coming up with their season program. By doing it this way, they really put a mark on their artistic identity and that's something quite special. Uh, I've attended two of their concerts and just started the first concert last year and I'm totally bowled over by the way they carry themselves on stage. Uh, not only uh, are they enthusiastic, they also um, show that they really enjoy what they're doing. That is very important because very often we see professional orchestras just going through the motions of performing and doing their work and then they walk off stage. But with these young people, you see something much more than that. You see that they obviously love what they're doing and they do it well. Mainly, I think in terms of managerial marketing stuff, we can just do it all in-house because the members in the committee, we, they all have enough of like leadership and experience from past orchestras that they play in or bands that they play in. Yeah, we have some students who have the relevant IT knowledge, the relevant IT know-how. They have the relevant skills, they help to design the website. We have very professional photographers who can help take photographs. So they can bring all these skills they have developed or they have gained to help run the orchestra, to contribute to the orchestra. I think the uh, extent to which they're driven by their passion is obvious from the way they've been able to come together to create an orchestra of their own. Each individual in this orchestra are very talented in his or her own right. For them to pursue this dream of serving the community, not just in Singapore as well as overseas as well, I think this is something which we like to impress upon the youth of Singapore today. And with the capability that has been enhanced through these experiences, I think really the sky is the limit to what they could possibly do with this orchestra in the future. When I was their age, um, that is the reason why we wanted to embark on, on, on a musical career. And, and that is to use music to, uh, to enrich the lives of others. I think it's completely and totally laudable what the orchestra and music makers hope to do through their art through their music making, they do intend to raise funds for charitable organisations and that's a wonderful way of expressing their talent and to share the talent with everybody. I think this is very inspiring. Younger people who see their talents would be inspired to do the same and the older people will also be very proud. The Orchestra of the Music Makers actually gets its name from a poem by 19th century poet Arthur O'Shaughnessy. It's a poem called Ode. It actually starts, we are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams. So our artistic dream is to actually perform high-level symphonic works that usually only full-time professional groups would dare to do because of the level of difficulty. And we believe that we can actually do it well with the right amount of support and uh, development programs and tutoring. On the strategic aspect and the philanthropic focus, we wish to actually establish a global network of orchestras with a similar vision and mission. Musicians who are passionate about music and have a heart for the world. And I can imagine with the years to come, with the many um, guest soloists and artists and conductors they're working with, they will become even better and actually um, be something you can be really, really proud of in Singapore. Basically, this award allows us to reach out to more people, more people who know of us, and that also will give us more opportunities to do philanthropic work.
because we actually really believe in the cause that we start out for. And this is a very um, great motivating factor for us to actually continue to sustain this business, especially when the going gets tough. Uh, we don't have the best players in the orchestra, but we have the best team players. And I believe that uh, with, with teamwork and with coordination with each other, we would be able to, to get there and get to our goal. So.